My story begins in the late 70s in El Salvador when my parents met. Both of them were native speakers of Spanish with English as their second language. In 1980, civil war broke out in El Salvador, and my parents decided to escape the violence and move to the United States to pursue their bachelor's degrees. They both graduated from Texas A&M, my dad with a bachelor's in animal science, and my mom with a bachelor's in special education. My mom went on to pursue a post-baccalaureate certificate in bilingual education at the University of Houston, and in 1987, when I was born, she was able to use her newly acquainted skills to raise me bilingual. Making sure that my children spoke Spanish fluently was a very easy decision in my heart. But it took a lot of courage and perseverance as the environment had strong influences that tried to persuade us to speak to them in English. But there were three main reasons why we were convinced this was the best thing to do for our children. We wanted them to speak to God in Spanish, say their prayers at night in the same language that we had learned them. I wanted them to understand their grandparents, and I wanted them to have a strong relationship with them. We used to speak on the phone every other week and we had holidays back home when they were able to form strong relationships with our extended family. Another reason was that I wanted to say to them, te amo, instead of I love you. I feel those two words in Spanish carry best my feelings to them. I took advantage of our summers together so Lorena and her siblings would know how to handle themselves in the English-speaking environment that we lived in. I also introduced them to the written word when they were very young. Lorena was read every night since she was a baby. She enjoyed it a lot. I believe she still does. When she started school, she was able to learn by heart with great ease nursery rhymes in both Spanish and English. Lorena has always been quite verbal and learning a language is easy for her. In 1992, peace was finally declared in El Salvador, and a couple of years later, when I was 8 years old, my parents decided to move back to El Salvador, so we could improve our Spanish and grow up with family. My mom got a job at La Academia Britannica Cuscatleca, the best school in the country. My siblings and I were enrolled right away. La Academia Britannica Cuscatleca is a British bilingual school with selective admission. I had no trouble growing up bilingual, and I always enjoyed being able to switch from one language to another depending on who I was talking to. In sixth grade, I started learning French, and I kept studying French all throughout my middle school and high school years. I even took three years of French at the Alliance Française. After graduation, I moved back to Texas, but this time on my own. It didn't take too long before I got used to talking to strangers and new acquaintances in English instead of Spanish. And when I enrolled in UTSA, I continued taking classes in French, joined the French club, and even became president of the French club. But it wasn't enough. I was ready to learn a fourth language. Little did I know, it was easier said than done. I took three semesters of Latin, but struggled the entire time. Not having anyone to practice a language with made it impossible for me to remember the vocabulary I had learned in class. But I was determined to learn a fourth language, and so I tried my luck with American Sign Language. I took two semesters of American Sign Language and loved every bit of it. I would find myself teaching my friends how to spell out their name in ASL, and I would even use sign language to memorize numbers and addresses. Before I knew it, it was time to graduate, and in 2011, I graduated with a double major in French Classical Studies and a minor in Latin American Studies. I knew I wanted to teach English as a second language, and continuing my studies in ASL was not going to be of much help in my degree. It was around the same time that I got to know some people from the Middle East, who introduced me to their culture, religion, and language. 
They quickly became my friends as I fell in love with the Arabic language. Early in 2012, halfway through my master's degree in teaching English as a second language, I began trying to teach myself Arabic. I tried many different methods, but I wasn't advancing very quickly, and decided to enroll in elementary Arabic 1014 at UTSA. Just a week before starting the fall 2012 semester, I went on a short vacation to Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. After coming back, my desire to learn Arabic has multiplied, and I cannot stop thinking and planning what my life would be like if I get the chance to teach English in the Middle East. I am 25 years old and I have a strong sentimental attachment to the Spanish language. I speak colloquial Salvadorian Spanish with my family and prefer to listen and dance to Spanish music. My dominant language is English, as my studies in El Salvador and in Texas were predominantly in English. I prefer to read, write, and even think in English. I even have a part-time job as an English writing tutor at UTSA. French would be my third language. I would categorize my French language proficiency as advanced. I can easily be a part of any conversation in French, yet I have an accent that follows me around. And every now and then, I'll find myself making a silly grammatical mistake, or not finding the right word to describe something. The majority of the time, I'll try and avoid mentioning my history with Latin and ASL, as I'm not as fluent as I wish I were. I hope to one day pick it back up. Arabic, on the other hand, I'm still in love with. I know it will be a steeper hill to climb, but I hope to one day call Arabic my fourth language. Inshallah.